The Boy of the Red Twilight Sky A Canadian Folk Tale Narrated by Pi English Long ago there dwelt on the shores of the great water in the west a young man and his younger wife. They had no children and they lived all by themselves far from other people on an island not far from the coast. The man spent his time in catching the deep-sea fish far out on the ocean, or in spearing salmon in the distant rivers. Often he was gone for many days and his wife was very lonely in his absence. She was not afraid, for she had a stout spirit, but it was very dismal in the evenings to look only at the grey leaden sky and to hear only the sound of the surf as it beat upon the beach. So day after day she said to herself, I wish we had children. They would be good company for me when I am alone and my husband is far away. One evening at twilight when she was solitary because of her husband's absence on the ocean catching the deep sea fish, she sat on the sand beach looking out across the water. The sky in the west was pale gray. It was always dull and gray in that country, and when the sun had gone down there was no soft light. In her loneliness the woman said to herself, I wish we had children to keep me company. A kingfisher, with his children, was diving for minnows not far away. And the woman said, Oh, sea bird with the white collar, I wish we had children like you. And the kingfisher said, Look in the seashells, look in the seashells, and flew away. The next evening the woman sat again upon the beach looking westward at the dull gray sky. Not far away a white seagull was riding on the waves in the midst of her brood of little ones. And the woman said, Oh, white sea bird, I wish we had children like you to keep us company. And the seagull said, Look in the seashells, look in the seashells, and flew away. The woman wondered greatly at the words of the kingfisher and the seagull. As she sat there in thought she heard a strange cry coming from the sand dunes behind her. She went closer to the sound and found that the cry came from a large seashell lying on the sand. She picked up the shell and inside of it was a tiny boy, crying as hard as he could. She was well pleased with her discovery, and she carried the baby to her home and cared for him. When her husband came home from the sea, he, too, was very happy to find the baby there, for he knew that they would be lonely no more. The baby grew very rapidly, and soon he was able to walk and move about where he pleased. One day the woman was wearing a copper bracelet on her arm and the child said to her, I must have a bow made from the copper on your arm. So to please him she made him a tiny bow from the bracelet and two tiny arrows. At once he set out to hunt game, and day after day he came home bearing the products of his chase. He brought home geese and ducks and brant and small sea birds and gave them to his mother for food. As he grew older the man and his wife noticed that his face took on a golden hue brighter than the color of his copper bow. Wherever he went there was a strange light. When he sat on the beach looking to the west the weather was always calm and there were strange bright gleams upon the water. And his foster parents wondered greatly at this unusual power. But the boy would not talk about it, when they spoke of it he was always silent. It happened once that the winds blew hard over the great water and the man could not go out to catch fish because of the turbulent sea. For many days he stayed on shore, for the ocean, which was usually at peace, was lashed into a great fury and the waves were dashing high on the beach. Soon the people were in need of fish for food. And the boy said, I will go out with you, for I can overcome the storm spirit. 
The man did not want to go, but at last he listened to the boy's entreaties, and together they set out for the fishing grounds far across the tossing sea. They had not gone far when they met the spirit of the storm coming madly from the southwest where the great winds dwelt. He tried hard to upset their boat, but over them he had no power, for the boy guided the frail craft across the water and all around them the sea was calm and still. Then the storm spirit called his nephew Black Cloud to help him, and away in the southeast they saw him hurrying to his uncle's aid. But the boy said to the man, Be not afraid, for I am more than a match for him. So the two met, but when Black Cloud saw the boy he quickly disappeared. Then the spirit of the storm called Mist of the Sea to come and cover the water, for he thought the boat would be lost if he hid the land from the man and the boy. When the man saw mist of the sea coming like a gray vapor across the water he was very frightened, for of all his enemies on the ocean he feared this one most. But the boy said, He cannot harm you when I am with you. And sure enough, when mist of the sea saw the boy sitting smiling in the boat he disappeared as quickly as he had come and the storm spirit in great anger hurried away to other parts, and that day there was no more danger on the sea near the fishing grounds. The boy and the man soon reached the fishing grounds in safety, and the boy taught his foster father a magic song with which he was able to lure fish to his nets. Before evening came the boat was filled with good fat fish and they set out for their home. The man said, Tell me the secret of your power. But the boy said, It is not yet time. The next day the boy killed many birds. He skinned them all and dried their skins. Then he dressed himself in the skin of a plover and rose into the air and flew above the sea. And the sea under him was gray like his wings. Then he came down and dressed himself in the skin of a blue jay and soared away again. And the sea over which he was flying was at once changed to blue like the blue of his wings. When he came back to the beach, he put on the skin of a robin with the breast of a golden hue like his face. Then he flew high and at once the waves under him reflected a color as of fire and bright gleams of light appeared upon the ocean and the sky in the west was golden red. The boy flew back to the beach and he said to his foster parents, Now it is time for me to leave you. I am the offspring of the sun. Yesterday my power was tested and it was not found wanting, so now I must go away and I shall see you no more. But at evening I shall appear to you often in the twilight sky in the west. And when the sky and the sea look at evening like the color of my face, you will know that there will be no wind nor storm and that on the morrow the weather will be fair. But although I go away, I shall leave you a strange power. And always when you need me, let me know your desires by making white offerings to me, so that I may see them from my home far in the west. Then he gave to his foster mother a wonderful robe. He bade his parents goodbye, and soared away to the west, leaving them in sadness. But the woman still keeps a part of the power he gave her, and when she sits on the island in a crevice in the dunes and loosens her wonderful robe, the wind hurries down from the land, and the sea is ruffled with storm, and the more she loosens the garment the greater is the tempest. But in the late autumn when the cold mists come in from the sea, and the evenings are chill, and the sky is dull and gray, she remembers the promise of the boy. And she makes to him an offering of tiny white feathers plucked from the breasts of birds. She throws them into the air, and they appear as flakes of snow and rise thickly into the winds. 
and they hurry westward to tell the boy that the world is gray and dreary as it yearns for the sight of his golden face. Then he appears to the people of earth. He comes at evening and lingers after the sun has gone, until the twilight sky is red, and the ocean in the west has gleams of golden light. And the people then know that there will be no wind and that on the morrow the weather will be fair, as he promised them long ago. The End Thank you for listening to Pi English. Please like, share and subscribe to Pi English. Have a nice day ahead.